hello, do you want to embrace violence, let it flow through your veins, let it shift your history and your future, and let it permeate across a broken land already caged in a never-ending war. Welcome to Gubat Banwa, a Filipino mythology-inspired tactical martial arts and war drama role-playing game, written by Makapat Hog, or Joaquin Kyle Saavedra. Backstory, welcome to the archipelago of Kitaytok, this land is violence, five polities wage war on each other, raiding settlements for resource, slaves, or just to satisfy grudges and enact revenge. But, you are Kadunganan, expert in violence capable of divorcing a person from life and marrying them with death. Warrior, martial artist, sorcerer, serves under a dadu for prestige, money, country, or self, going on ventures to faraway places to perform violence. Question is, why, why you choose to take on violence to reach what you thought you deserve, and how much are you willing to sacrifice for it, whether it's your own body and convictions, or the lives of people that got in your way. Whatever your answer is, just remember, you can't wash away blood, water just add to it. So anyway let's talk about why this game is so freaking awesome. So basically if you can't tell, this game is about you being a 16th century viking samurai serving under a daimyo or warlord to raid other settlements and such, except it's also none of those things and is instead set in a fantasy version of 16th century pre-colonial Philippines filled with god, magic, and guns. In combat, Gubat Banwa as a whole is designed to emphasize tactics, much like Lancer and Dungeon and Dragon 4th edition, the best edition. The best part about the combat mechanic of Gubat Banwa is most definitely the violence roll, which you will have to roll to inflict violence on your foe. When you miss, you still might get something, and when you hit, it's not just a simple matter of dealing damage to your target. Accurate and inaccurate conditions you get doesn't just give the dice result a plus one or minus one, with accurate attack, your attack will never fail to achieve something, but with inaccurate attack or foe being in cover, your attack will never get critical hit. And since there's no such thing as to hit stat, evasion, or armor class in Gubat Banwa, this violence role will be the same from the start to end, finding methods to receive accuracy and defeat inaccuracy along with cover can be very crucial. Since this is a d8 dice, you can also see the violence roll in this way, this definitely put things in perspective doesn't it? With momentous miss, you could get favors that can be spent to upgrade your dice or perform various game changing techniques, like the forbidden techniques of your discipline, martial arts your Kadunganan can learn to mend or break the worlds around them. This can include but not limited to, turning the entire battlefield into a bullet hell, gaining stand power and spiritual enlightenment to perform extreme violence, grappling the goddamn ground and convincing it that you are an earthbender, and opening the reality marble of sword dimensions to infinitely stab your foes to death. If you did use the forbidden technique, congratulations, you just used world bending martial arts to perform the same job an ordinary rock would, you are useless at everything but violence now. You can also get favors via good role playing, risky play, awesome feats of violence, or just taunting people, you know, the usual. When you do hit something with the violence roll, you can do damage, effect, or both at the same time depending on the hit. Damage isn't determined by your weapons, most of the time, instead it's determined by your base damage, going from 1 to 4 as you get more experienced, and discipline damage, which can be either 1d4 or 1d6. And effect is dependent on your weapon types, but can also be overridden by some actions like, grapple, shove, trip, along with techniques from practically all the disciplines. Basically, something interesting will always happen when you hit something, it's not just dealing big damage with it. Even getting hit isn't a one and done affair, as you can use your reaction to dive away from the attack, push the attacker, and if you have the techniques to do it, you can even catch attack with your bare hand or even hit right back immediately, so even off your turn, you have to pay attention to the changing dynamic of the battlefield. There's also other battlefield mechanics too, like attacking from height gives you more range, while making incoming ranged attack less effective, flanking a target makes your attack more effective, sending a target onto an object deals damage to them, and many more. There's always something to exploit, and you should always use them to their fullness. But, if you think the combat mechanic alone is what got me making this video, you are, partially correct. It's time to talk about discipline. Again, disciplines are martial arts your Kadunganan can learn to become more powerful, each time you gain an esteem from a venture, a level equivalent, you can pick one of the six techniques available from any discipline, so you can mix and match anything to create your ultimate Kadunganan. And with a maximum of 20 esteem, that's a lot of techniques. 
but I also need to remind you that techniques are all you get from gaining esteem, only at esteem 6, 11, and 16 do your base stats change from rising in prominence, gaining more damage, metal, and other things. Basically, this game is designed as a whole to care less about raw stats and more about the sheer abundance of techniques you have in your arsenal as you will need to be very flexible in combat. Disciplines are also separated into two different categories, discipline roles, and discipline origin. Discipline roles are what the disciplines are good at, separated into control, which debuff enemies and set them up, marksman, which shoot them, raider, which cut them, sentinel, which protect their allies, and support, I don't think I need to explain this one. Discipline origins are instead where the discipline originates from, the Lakhanate of Bir Banwa, the Rajanate of Gatu Sun, the Confederation of Apambukit, the Sultanate of Akai, and the Nation of Mai. These are the five major polity that rules over the archipelago of Kitatak, there are smaller polity and mostly independent settlements, but they don't have widespread influence over the land for the most part, and while the disciplines originated from them, after centuries of warfare, each discipline has spread out to the rest of the archipelago already, much like the war did, you would expect there to be 20 disciplines in total, you are wrong, there's 35 of them and this includes but not limited to, Bar Rewitch, who uses dark magic to turn black powder firearms into rapid firing instruments of death, and would not appear out of place in Guilty Gear. Demog Demon Breaker, who decides that instead of using divine instruments to deal with god and demon, you just suplex the shit out of them, and as it turns out, strength that can pulverize a demon's spine can break a man just as easily. Uwa Yal Answer, a crocodile rider that protects their allies by the very fact that they are riding on a goddamn man-eating crocodile, why the hell would anyone attack a person riding a crocodile? And Mangong Gaya, sea raider that uses all sort of dirty pragmatic tricks to win, up to and including disarming anyone that tries to attack you and instantly stab them back with their own blade, and many more equally cool disciplines. Not only that, if you take more techniques from the same discipline and you are in that discipline, you get more features. For example, a yam hunter is a discipline that has a dog, why you have a dog, do you even need to ask, with three techniques taken from the discipline, you unlocks expert feature of the I am hunter which gives you more dog, and with six techniques, you get even more dog, do you even need to ask why this is the best discipline in the entire book? And if you feel like you want to play other disciplines, you can just switch it out during respite, which is basically an off combat phase when you are not out venturing and performing violence, and boy is there a lot of ways to trigger violence. When making your own Kadunganan, you will also be choosing your own background, interesting events, complications, and convictions. Background doesn't just give you a non-combat skill, it also serves to make you own a debt to someone, and that someone might ask you to pay it back in a way that might go against your convictions, like breaking your loyalty with your friends. Interesting events are instead, well, interesting events that further define your character, like say, you were visited by an Umalagad bringing a horrible omen, yet that omen hasn't come yet and you dread the day it do, or you killed someone important but nobody know it was you, or you were blinded, and maybe, you could find the person that did this. Complications are complicated relationships that are almost guaranteed to spark drama and trouble, and conviction, well, it's what your character fights for, and sometimes, you find situations where you might need to go against it. All this allows the Mang Aoyut, the game master, to shape and weave your character's life and make it a lot more interesting for everyone at the table, there's always a story to tell with so many things to mix it up, and so many debts to pay. And if you are interested or you are bored, there's also around 50 pages worth of lore and history to read on the archipelago of Kitatak, the folk legends, the people living on it, the polity, both major and minor, their faith and culture, all heavily inspired by late porcelain period Philippines and even some of early Spanish Philippines. There's always something interesting to read in here. Anyway, while you can get the book on itch.io or drive through RPG right now, it's not quite complete yet, it's currently version 0.9 as of the date, things I have mentioned in this video might even be changed dramatically, but it's going to get even better when it's truly finished with more stuff, mechanics, and arts. Still, it's up to you to decide whether you are looking for a new tabletop RPG book to play or read, right now or later. As a final word, before I knew about Gubat Banwa, you could say that I'm quite ignorant of Southeast Asia culture despite living here since I have emerged. This book, is a wealth of historical knowledge on pre-colonial Philippines, and it makes me quite interested in learning more of it. Obviously, it's not mostly actual history, it's a closely resembling fantastical version of one with plenty of real facts spiced in, 
but it gets one point for making me want to learn more about history. Also bear in mind, if you haven't noticed already, this book is full of words from the many languages of Philippines, you will roughly understand them as you read through the book, but for some, you might need an online translator. Anyway, this won't be the last time I'm talking about works from Joaquin Kyle Saavedra, stay tuned for the future, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.